All right. Where did I, where did I leave off? Where, when was the last time you guys were here? Which step? Did, did you guys hear this part? Where is the oven? Are, are you guys like, were you guys there when I talked about the oven? Okay. Okay. So then were you guys there when I started to do this part? Okay. So then were you there when I did this part? Okay, so then it was just this step. All right. So notice that g of 2x is the same thing as for every x I see here, I plug it in 2x. And so we did that. All right. So this square root of 2x is now the stuffed turkey. The stuffed turkey is the square root of 2x. So all that remains is to put it into the oven. So let's get the oven ready. Let's get that oven ready right here. Notice because the oven is h of x is equal to 7 over x. The oven looks like this when it's ready. The door is open. It's, we're ready to put our stuffed turkey in there. And that's where it goes right here, where the x used to be. That's where the stuffed turkey goes. And you know what? Once we do that, we don't really need the parentheses anymore. That was just there to show us, hey, that's where x used to be. And now we're plugging in. And now we're sticking in the stuffed turkey into the oven. So this is actually h composed with g composed with f of x. That's what that equals. 7 over square root of 2x. Make sense? Okay, to honor the fact that I'm wearing a black hole tie, let's do a problem that has to do with gravity. Newton's law of gravitation states that the gravitational force f sub g between any two massive bodies let's say some m1 and some m2 is given by m1 times m2 times some gravitational constant g divided by r squared where r is the distance between the two celestial bodies what is this example of a celestial body Someone write in there in the in the chat. What is a celestial body? Give me an example of a celestial body. Yes, yes is not a celestial body. Us. You think you? Your celestial body? No. Like in human. Yeah, I, I could be. <laughs> so a celestial body is like a planet, like Earth, the Moon, Jupiter, Venus, Mars. Neptune, the sun, something on an astronomical scale. But you guys are correct in thinking that you guys have your own gravitational pull. Because you have mass, you're composed of matter, 
your body has a gravitational pull. It's just very weak compared to the gravitational pull, the pull of the earth or the gravitational pull of the sun. It's much weaker than those. But you have a gravitational pull. I have a gravitational pull, and it's actually pulling on every single one of you right now. Even though you guys are at home, my gravitational pull is pulling on you. It's just negligible. It's just so small, you can probably not even measure it. Or can you? We can measure it. Actually, let's assume that I weigh 100 kilograms which is around 220 pounds. And let's say you guys weigh uh, 50 kilograms. One of you maybe weighs 50 kilograms. That's around 120 pounds, okay? If M1 is Professor Niazi, I weigh 100 kilograms. That's like uh, 220 pounds. And M2 is like one of you guys, maybe you guys weigh 50 kilograms. Maybe you guys, one of you weighs like 120 pounds. Let's calculate the gravitational force between us if you're at home, okay? So in this equation, I replace this with 100 for my mass. I'll omit the kilograms. I'll put the 50 here for your mass, okay? Our G is the gravitational, universal gravitational constant. I'll look up the value of that. It is 6.7 times 10 to the 11. And you guys know what that stuff means because we've already gone over scientific notation. All divided by the distance between us squared. Here's where I'm going to have to make an estimate, okay? Let's say I'm in Bethany. And you guys are in uh, OSU OKC. So let's see what the distance is on Google Maps. I know you guys really aren't at OSU OKC. All right. I know you're not really there, but let's say you are. So the distance between us, according to Google Maps, is 5.6 miles. Let's convert that to kilometers. 5.6 miles. Let's convert that to kilometers. All right. I know that there's 3.2 miles in 5 kilometers. So I can cancel out the miles. So our answers will be in kilometers. So let's see. We got 5.6 times 5 divided by 3.2. So we are 8.75 kilometers away. So that's what goes here, 8.75. Okay. So let's see what is the force of the gravitational attraction between me and you guys at home being this distance apart. Okay, so we got 100 times 50 times 6.7 times 10 to the 11. Divide this by our computed 8.75. And let's square this value. Did I put the gravitational constant in wrong? Oh, there's a negative on there. My eye didn't catch it, but that makes sense. That needs to be a negative. So our calculation will result in, let me just change my calculation here. 
put a negative right there. Boom. So this results in a 4.3 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay. Newtons of force. That's how much my gravitational pull is on you guys. To kind of gauge just how strong that is, that is this much. Okay. I'll put a four here. I'll put a three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's this many newtons. Okay, so we'll say that actually a raindrop, a raindrop falling on your head, just one little tiny raindrop, has a force of 42 newtons. Notice how small this number is compared to 42 newtons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 orders of magnitude smaller. You would have to increase this mass by a lot to get an appreciable gravitational pull. But how does this relate to function composition? Okay. Let's say we have some function g of r. Then let's say we have some function a of f, where a stands for acceleration, OK? We know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So this implies that acceleration is really force divided by mass. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, class is over. We will talk about, let's see, I believe that's actually all the function composition. There's probably an example where we can do a turkey in the stuffing in the oven example. But after that, this chapter is finished. So the next week, we have two more chapters, and then we can review for the exam, which you guys will be taking not this Sunday, but next Sunday. That's when it's due. Make sense? All right. You guys have any questions before we leave? All right. See you guys later. Go practice going Super Saiyan in math. Goodbye. You have a good week as well. <laughs>